And this thing runs like crap. I mean, look how bad it's shaking. Look how bad it's misfiring. It's way better than it was before, but more importantly, it's way safer than it was before. Ryan's Mobile One. This 1988 Ford Bronco 2, 2.9 liter, came in chugging like crazy, drinking a lot of fuel, running poor, no power, and it had a bunch of different anomalies with it. We're going to get to what fixed it, but first of all, here's the information we were able to gather on it. When you take the spark plug wires off to test for misfire, you pull it off, and there's no change. I've got that spark plug wire all the way off, it's sparking on the side, and it's still running. I couldn't figure it out. And I was trying to decide, you know, it's like you need air fuel mixture, spark, timing, all that kind of stuff. And if you're taking away spark, it should misfire. But you pull the next one over, and it does the same thing. But just on this bank, on the other bank, if you create a misfire by pulling the spark plug wire off, it stumbles like you would expect it to. It had a trouble code on the OBD-1 system, not worth much, of 54. I measured the throttle position sensor and it had a dead spot in the middle of it. So there's no fuel pressure here. And then if I cycle the key, the pressure will climb up slow. It won't go past 20 and then it drops back down. I had to cycle the key like this probably six or seven times to even get that needle to move off of the perch. The timing was off by two degrees. Another shop had been into it and couldn't figure out what the problem was. It had a really nasty clack in the engine, uh, especially up high on the passenger side on bank one. Uh, vacuum pressure was at 15 inches of mercury and it was shaky. Let's get into it. It runs so rough, it can barely make it up a hill. It shakes really bad. It's misfiring like a dog. Feels like the engine's gonna jump right out and just call it quits on the side of the road. It hurts using this when you know what things are capable of today and you get in the habit, you forget how amazing OBD2 is and you really understand why a lot of the old timers hated these things. They hated computers. They hated working with them. They were not a real great asset in the beginning. But things have become more perfected now. Listen how awful that sounds. There's knocking, huffing, slapping. And it sounds terrible. It'll calm down in a minute. How bad it's shaking. And so I couldn't figure it out, couldn't figure it out. I went and talked to a buddy of mine, and he's like, You ought to check the fuel pressure regulator. Now I've done a video on a Chevy Suburban that had a leaking fuel pressure regulator, and you'd see fuel come out the uh, hose there. And this one had a spark plug wire leak, so if that failed enough, it could light itself on fire and burn to the ground. Let me pull it off and I'll show you. You have to be fast because this also drops fuel pressure because of the diaphragm being bad. Like I'm gonna just cycle it and we'll watch that and see what happens. See the fuel just leaking out of that? Like that's a big problem. <laughs> what that means basically is it's got a vacuum hose that's sucking fuel into the intake and supplying it with all the fuel that it needs to run that whole bank. And the other thing is, is that if you've seen my knock sensor video, you know about pre-detonation and about if there's carbon on the cylinder, it glows like a glow plug. The carbon in the cylinder and on the valves can glow just like blowing on coals on a fire because there's already that hydrocarbon stuff there and it's already the compression alone is enough to cause that to glow. Not to mention just all the uh, air and things that are going to it. But look at that thing just drip. So you've got fresh fuel going in, you've got an ignition source. So so basically it's running on its own and it's probably pre-detonating uh, which should and can affect the timing if the knock sensor is working properly but that can make this thing run all kinds of rough all because the diaphragm in here instead of opening and closing based on vacuum the diaphragm is destroyed so it's not getting the right regulation that the regulator should cause and it's causing fuel to go past that diaphragm 
and get sucked in you know just like a big gulp that never ends on constant refill the engine ran rough like you saw but then the smell and this this the carbon monoxide coming out the tailpipe of this thing was just unreal so what's the fix you can get a rebuild kit to rebuild the fuel pressure regulator and then your problem solved so to get this out obviously you pull the hose off here and then there's an eight millimeter bolt here and here and then when you go to pull it you gotta pull it straight back i rock it like this do some spray silicone in there and then pull it up and you see that the fuel goes through the line down into here but either it'll come out of the o-ring or the o-ring will come out either way just make sure that all of it is intact and comes out this was stuck in there so i had to fish it up and out from there unbuckle this guy and then use a fuel disconnect i like to flush this out with some silicone spray Silicone can be a glue or it can be a lubricant. In this context, it's a lubricant. And these are my favorite disconnect. I'll leave a link in the description. The reason why I like these is because it hinges clear back here. A lot of them will hinge locally and then they've got a huge gap to where you don't get a good disconnect. Going on, push the lines together. Push your disconnect tool into it. So once you get the rubber boot off, you can see it's just a dash pot type regulator. That's the fuel pressure regulator. Again, if it's worth it to Ford to build this and put it on it, it's worth it to me to put it back on there. Probably not absolutely necessary, but there's a reason it's there. They wouldn't have designed it, engineered it, and produced it by the thousands. Anytime you work on something where there's fuel, make sure to have a fire extinguisher handy. Of course, I've got the Halon one. set from 12 degrees BTDC to 10 degrees BTDC as per the emissions tag right here. I've got a new throttle position sensor. It doesn't have a dead spot in the middle of it anymore. I've also got a new spark plug wire. We had an ignition leak from the last shop that worked on it and I think we're good to go. Things running pretty decent now. Still got a little rock. Like I say, it's got some cleanup to do on a test drive, but things way better than it was. People really like the cutaways and so that's what we're gonna do. Just like that. It's full of water and capped off. It's not leaking out. It seems to be holding. Keep going. So the gig's up. I'm leaking water everywhere. I filled it all the way full, capped it off. But I think we're close enough to pop it. So I have just the back side to go. So I have a spring against the diaphragm, something that holds the spring. I wasn't kidding you when I said I had this thing full of water. So this is the part that failed. It had gasoline getting around it and it looks like it was getting around on the outside. I cooled this off halfway through but there is where the spring went and then this pintle basically just corked this off. You know like spring loaded pushed against it and the vacuum pulled it away to allow fuel to go in through here into this chamber and then down through there into the fuel rail. I'm happy I got this undone without blowing it up. I was listening for the Holy Spirit the whole time to tell me stop, 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 and it did. <laughs> so I dip it and cool it off and then go some more. Or it's my own internal dialogue paranoia. Either way, I was okay. So there's like kind of a glue or a sealant around the outside of it. I don't see any failure in the membrane itself. I was expecting a hole. I wanted to see a hole. But that is a fuel pressure regulator. The more vacuum or RPMs or whatever, the more that it pushes uh, or sucks this back away to uncork. There it is. Disaster averted twice. Thanks for watching. Be sure to click like and subscribe. Bonus footage at the end.